Hi guys, I'm Dr. Winnie Yu. I'm a physical therapist here in New York City, and you are tuning into Well and Good's Trainer of the Month Club. Today I'm going to be taking you through some of my favorite exercises to relieve morning stiffness. It's super simple, super effective, and you could do it from the comforts of your bed, your couch, your living room rug, virtually anywhere. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is start in that tall kneeling position, right? Hands are down in front of you, feet are about hips width apart, if not a little bit wider. If your ankles are stiff, you can always tuck the toes under. If available to you, you can always put the feet down on the ground. You're gonna sit the butt down towards the heels. Core is nice and activated. You don't wanna be really arched. The back should be gently tucked. You're gonna reach the fingertips nice and long away from you, walking the fingertips towards the edge of your mat. Slowly relax the head down. We're gonna hold it for about two to three seconds before we transition up back into that tabletop position. And then we're gonna sit the heels back. So depending on your position, you can make this a dynamic exercise by moving through the position or you can make it a static exercise just by holding this position for 30 seconds. Only because it's the start of the day, I'm gonna choose to make this dynamic so I can bring more blood flow to the joints. So we're just gonna go for one more repetition here. Again, sitting the heels back, seeming the hips back towards the heels, and then we're gonna come on up. We're gonna walk our hands into that tabletop position again, bring the knees a little bit closer so that now you're more in that vertical alignment, right? And we're gonna go through thread the needle. So if you're looking at my back position, right? I said this in the last week's video and I want you to focus again. My neck, right, and my shoulders and my hips for the most part are in a straight line. I want you to think about gently tucking the chin so your neck is protected, right? Back is nice and flat. We're not sinking down or pushing up too far. We're in a nice straight position and we're gonna reach through to thread the needle and then we're gonna rotate up nice and tall towards the sky. Where the hand goes, the head will follow. We're gonna go for eight here. So if you're looking at where my head is, right, I'm not reaching and overextending past the hands because a lot of times people will tell me, oh, my neck feels a little stiff in this position. The biggest thing is you wanna have your gaze follow your hand the entire time so that your neck gets to follow that shoulder motion. We have three more here. Good. Breathe with the position. You can exhale as you come down, inhale as you come up. We got two more here. And last one before we transition to that opposite side. Again, place that hand down back under you. We wanna make sure our hand's not too far forward or too far back, nice and even. Core is activated, back is flat. We're gonna thread under, right, where the hand goes. My eyes are following. I'm gonna reach up nice and tall towards the sky. Down and up. The big thing here is as you rotate, I want you to get a little bit deeper into that rotation with each repetition. The idea behind mobility exercises is really improving that range of motion, improving that flexibility to those muscles surrounding each joint. And the big key here is never to crank or bounce within any position. You wanna gently ease into the range. So that's eight. We're gonna come on back to center so that we can do some of those half kneeling exercises. As I mentioned, if you wanna pause and take another round of these ones, that's totally fine. So the first exercise for this block is going to be the hip switches. We're gonna have our hands behind our backs, feet are about hips width apart, if not a little bit wider, heels down, toes are up, back is nice and flat. We don't wanna be super rounded or super arched, right, nice and even. We're gonna drive both knees down towards the ground, holding for about one second here and then drive down towards the opposite side. As we go into these exercises, right, if you're only able to stop here, that's totally fine. We want every repetition to get a little bit deeper to the range without feeling pinching, cramping, or even sharp pains at the hip. So we're gonna go for 10, 10 repetitions here, right? We're about halfway. And again, soft on the arms. We're not really pushing very much through the arms. They're just there to support us. We have three more rounds here. And two. And one. 
perfect. From here, I'm gonna have you step on up into that half kneeling position. So one foot could be slightly to the side of you, if available to you with those adductor muscles, the muscles that support the inner thigh. You can place that slightly wider, but if that's not available to you, you can always step forward here. So hands will be about hips width, right? And you're gonna step that foot slightly out, depending on what's available, and we're gonna shift our hips down towards the opposite side. Come on back to center. Shift our hips down towards that left side, back to center, we're gonna go for eight here. So the big thing I want you to focus on is really keeping that core activated as you're moving. Even though it's not a core exercise, I say this all the time to my patients, you can get sneaky core work anytime, anywhere. Essentially, you can make every exercise a core exercise if you do it properly. So you wanna think about that gentle activation, bracing through the core without holding the breath. We have three more here and two and one. Transition through tall kneeling, step the foot out to the opposite side. If available to you, step out a little bit wider. If not, bring the leg closer back to midline. We're gonna shift the hips towards the right, back to center, towards the right, back to center. We're gonna go for A tier, really focusing on sinking deeper into the range with every repetition. We got four more. And at any point, if you feel like, oh, this is a little bit uncomfortable or pinching at any point, you can always step that foot closer just to protect the hips and really make sure you're easing into the motion. We're gonna go for the last two here and then we're gonna come on back to center. The next exercise here is really similar in the setup. So I'll show you guys from the side really quick so you can see my pelvic position. You guys are gonna turn, right? Hips are about 90-90. And I want you to think about dropping that pelvis or tucking in that tailbone as if you were hiding in your tail, right? This helps to protect your lower back because far too common, I see people go really deep into the stretch and they're telling me, oh, I feel something in my back. You don't wanna feel something in your back. This is a hip flexor dynamic stretch. So again, 90-90 position, gently tuck the pelvis, core is activated as we go into eight dynamic rocks here. The biggest thing that I want you to guys to focus on here is you may not be going very far and that's absolutely okay. The biggest key here is you should be feeling a gentle stretch to the muscles at the front of the thigh, right? These guys can commonly get really tight if you're spending a lot of time in that sitting position, um, driving. So now we'll switch on over to that opposite side. Hips and knees are about 90-90. Gently tuck that pelvis and we're gonna rock forward for eight times. So again, I try to do more dynamic stretches in the morning because you're waking up after a long nights of sleep, whether that's six hours, seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, have you, whatever that time is, you spend a lot of times in just a static position. So dynamic stretches are a great way to bring more blood flow to those muscles and to lubrication to those joints before you start the day. So the last exercise in this position will be the world's greatest stretch. Yes, it's a fun name, right? It's the world's greatest. It actually is a great exercise. I'm gonna have you start off in that high plank position, right? If you look at where my hands and my shoulders and my elbows are, they're for the most part in that straight line. I'm gonna have you step that left foot forward, drop that back knee down, tuck the toes under, right arm will stay down, left foot is to the side. You're gonna drive that elbow down towards the ground, reaching as far as you can to your available range. Drive the elbow down, reach up towards the sky. We're gonna go for eight here. So if you look at where my head and my gaze is, again, we're following my hand so that we're protecting the neck as we move into that range. We got three more. And last one before we transition over to that opposite side. So slowly step that foot back, step that right leg to the outside of the mat, right? and then you can drive that right elbow down towards the ground. I'm a little bit tighter on the side, so you see I can't get as deep into the range, and that's normal to have discrepancies in mobility or even flexibility from either side. That's why we do unilateral exercises to address those differences. So, so we got four more here. And three, two, and one, come on back to center. We're gonna to transition to the supine position. So what that means is we're laying back down towards the mat, right? And we're gonna have our feet about hips width apart. 
Similar to last week's exercise, if you guys tuned in, we're gonna do some core stabilization exercises. So we're gonna first flatten out the back, right? I don't wanna tunnel underneath that lower back. If you're thinking of where my hand goes, I should not be able to slide my hands under you. I want you to think about flattening every segment of that lower spine against the mat. Hands are to either side of you. Core is gently activated. We're gonna bring that legs up into that 90-90 position. Core is activated as we're lifting the legs up. We don't wanna lose that core activation as we bring that legs up. Hands will be in, on top, right? And we're gonna extend the opposite arm, opposite leg. This is a great way to prime up the core. So if you're looking at my positioning, I'm slowly extending opposite arm, opposite leg in a slow controlled manner without losing that flat back. I want you to think about resetting if you need between each one. If you feel like, oh, my back's slowly starting to give and not able to maintain that core activation, right? You can always pause in the middle, tuck the pelvis, squeeze through the core before you go into those next repetitions. We have three left here. Good. And two. And one. We're gonna come on back down to center. Feet are about hips width apart. Back is again flat. I want you to think about two main things before you get started with this exercise. So first, flatten the back to squeeze through the core, squeeze through the glutes, right? Step one foot onto the mat, the other foot will be up, right? And we're gonna lift and drive off that stance leg heel for those single leg bridges. So I want you to think about driving through the heel as you raise the foot up, and we don't wanna maintain an arched back. So I want you to think about maintaining a stable core, stable glutes as you drive through the heel and go through these bridges. Last one before we transition to the opposite side. Shift the weight over to that left side, drive through the heel, core is activated, glutes are activated. You have a stable lower back, back is flat. Again, push through the heels to lift up. And if you look at where my lower back position is, right, I have a pretty flat back throughout. And this is really important because if you're experiencing morning stiffness, the natural inclination may be to hinge off that lower back. We wanna just protect our back with these mobility and stability exercises. Take a rest. We're gonna go for one more round of these. Again, flat back, core is activated. Bring the legs up into that tabletop position. We're gonna extend opposite arm, opposite leg. Breathe with either exercise, slow and controlled. Maintain that flat back as we move through these. So again, we're maintaining a flat back as we're going into this exercise. Breathing nice and slow. A lot of people, when they do core exercise, they end up holding their breath. We don't want that. The secret is counting out loud your repetitions to make sure that you're breathing nice and slow throughout the repetitions. Last one. Good, lower down. Last round of those single leg bridges. Again, back is flat, core is squeezed, glute is squeezed. Drive through that heel. We're gonna go up for eight. So with these exercise, if this one is challenging and you feel like you're not quite ready for this yet, totally fine. You can always shift both legs down so you're doing a supine bridge. This is just a great variation to get those hamstring and glutes firing if you feel like the double leg position is stable and safe for you. If you feel like anything at all into that lower back or any discomfort, sharpness, aching, stray away from this variation, start off with the double leg ones, and then progress to it once you find that you feel nice and stable in those double leg ones. So you got two more here, one more, and come on down. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's workout. We covered some really great exercises to help with that morning stiffness. If you guys are waking up with any aches in that upper back or lower back, right? These are a great way to get started with the day. You can do these from the comforts of your bed or even in the living room on a rug or on a couch. So if you have any 
um, aches in your back, right? Definitely, definitely go through either the first round of these or throughout the entire cycle for a couple extra rounds just to bring more blood flow to those areas. Again, I'm Dr. Winnie Yu. I'm a physical therapist and you are tuning in to Well and Good's Trainer of the Month Club. If you guys enjoyed today's workout, there will be more videos on Well and Good's page. So definitely subscribe to learn more. Can't wait to see you guys soon.